Hello and welcome to The Verdict, where Dave Yates and I have the pleasure of looking back at a festive period which presented us with bundles of information. How have you gone about processing all that information, Dave, we've seen over the, the last five or so days? It's been a, a, an absolute feast, hasn't it, over both sides of the Irish Sea. Uh, some horses who have enhanced their reputations, others who have not. Uh, but uh, we've got so much to go at. We might as well just crack on, might we? Crack on. It's, it's graded action galore, if you like. Most of them grade ones as well. So we'll start with two grade ones that took place over three miles. Um, we'll come to the Savills Chase. We'll start with the King George. It was won, as we know, by Clan de Zobo. Let's uh, pick him up here. Just tracking stable companion surname. We pick this up uh, six out. Now, keep your eye on, I think at this point, Dave, lost in translation under Robbie Power. He... He'd had a mixed bag, really. That wasn't so good six out. And he, a lot of people suggested he wasn't travelling as opposed to the winner with the kind of fluency we, we've become accustomed to seeing. He was better at this one. Well, I think that this was a, in, immediately at the start of the programme talking about horses who have enhanced their reputations and those who haven't. Even the most ardent members of the Lost in Translation fan club, Tom, and I would count myself as one of those, could not argue that this horse has enhanced his reputation as a result of this run. You'll see Robbie Power say he sees his strides and he says, right, I'm going to ask him for the big one here. Yeah. And look at the difference between he and Clander Zobo at this four out. Look how they come away from it. it. It's not as if he takes off a mile away. He just doesn't get up, does he? No. And it was suggested he had a breathing problem after the race. Well, they're going to look at his breathing. Colin Tizard said afterwards that he might go to Newbury on the Super Saturday fixture uh, for the Denman chase but as you say it was a mixed round of jumping uh, he ran in snatches slightly when you think about the impression that Lost in Translation created his first go in open company over fences in the Betfair chase when he was imperious. Well, look at him there. He looks pretty sorry uh, at the back of the field. But let's concentrate on what's going on at the head of affairs because now we have surname about to be tackled by Clondes Oboe. And if you thought that there might be a problem with or an issue with surname stamina going up to three miles, you wouldn't really have expected to see Clondes Oboe travelling noticeably the better, would you? But that's what mm. that's what happened and. Sam Twist and Dave is in the plate, but a warming result uh, for the jockey. Of course, four years, stable jockey to Paul Nichols, comes away to win by 21 lengths. Is this a case, as you can see, of a horse with greater stamina beating two horses who simply don't stay as well? Or is he just, for all ratings going into the race, wouldn't say so, is he the superior horse? Or, I mean, is the key thing here the trip? Call up the head on for it. I think that one thing that's worth noting with the King George, is that Clondes Oboe, since the race was won, run it for the first time in 1947, Clondes Oboe is the 15th repeat winner. Mm -hmm. Now, one of those is Kicking King, who won at uh, Sandown. But it's a, it's a race where horses do come back and win it again. Obviously, five times Corto Star, four Desert Orchids, three Wayward Lads. And... This is a test that's, that suits Clonders over very well. Connections of surname said afterwards that he just felt flat. When I talked about we would have expected Harry Cobden to sit there on the bridle, Tom, what we wouldn't have expected would to see Harry Cobden's body language be rather negative, if you like, during a relatively early stage of the race. And he knows it, he's beaten there. Yeah, yeah. He? And, and, and they were inclined to say afterwards that they felt that, for whatever reason, surname just wasn't on his game. He ran flat, that's what they said, without his usual sparkle. He'll go back to Ascot now, reports Paul Nichols. But this was, uh, you know, obviously, we haven't even mentioned foot pad. Surely was, they're never trying him over three miles I again. think that was... Is that fair? I, I'd, be, I'd be surprised to see him. It, it, this was uh, his... Remember, the, the star novice, uh, a bit of a uh, rub out Redford of a season last mm. year, wasn't it? Then returned over two miles and six at Thurlers and got back to winning form, up to three here. That didn't seem to work. Are we at a, are we at a, a crossroads with Lost in Translation? Well... I think we might be. How do we assess Clondes Oboe, who didn't stay 
at Cheltenham in 2019, how he would get on in the Gold Cup next March, because Paul Nichols is inclined to give him another go. He's only seven years old, he's strengthened up, but he has to prove his stamina. And I think it shows that that, right-handed, three miles Kempton, that's his bag. Yeah. Not certain 3-2 Cheltenham is, but he, he's likely to have another go. 